That's right. That's right, friend beautiful homies. Another crossover on today's show, talking with Jeff Ellis of the Locked On, soon to be Locked On Guardians. I must say the Locked On Cleveland Guardians came out all sorts of the pitching stuff and Ruben Ye blood trade at give us Mike Clevenger, but Cal Quattro also became amazing. And just kind of diving deep into that Locked On crossover event before we get into it, though. How you doing, Jeff? You know, I'm doing uh, pretty well. We uh, had a <laughs> oh, it, something go wrong. I sometimes I never know. Uh, I was just saying I'm doing pretty well. The Indians did something. I feel like uh, as an Indians uh, person, we often see them do uh, absolutely nothing. At least we have a new uh, hitting coach today. I was joking with you before the show that uh, yeah. you're trying to get this together to figure it all out. And uh, on the day we're going to talk pitching coaches, the Indians bring in a hitting coach. So uh, that just kind of amused me and the uh, general connections of things. You know, connections is great, and I guess our timing is great. We have been trying to do this for a while, as we just see Jonathan Taylor rush for 78 yards for a touchdown. Jeez Louise, shout out to the Jets. Uh, they are a bad football team. But you're not, of course, listening to football podcast, guys. Thank you for making Locked On Padres and Locked On Indians your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. You guys know who I am, usually, at least if you're listening to this. Right about baseball, at just baseball, as staff writer, fires on base, off bench baseball, wherever. And Jeff, he's covered a lot of draft stuff before, big time draft. I mean, a nerd. You know what I'm talking about? Like Jeff is like, he, look at his name. If you're watching the YouTube ch- video, which you aren't, by the way, go check that out. Locked on Padres on YouTube for my audio listeners. It is in the description. If you can see Jeff right now, at Jeff MLB Draft is literally his Twitter username. There you go. This guy's an expert on prospects and all the guys you've never heard of. And I've been really, been really excited to have you on the show because, you know, there's been a lot of, I guess, what's the word? A lot of transactions between both of our few couple years, I guess you, you could say. And the biggest new one is Ruben Niebla coming to the Padres, which is what I want to get into. That's how I want to start this off. Firstly, what is your reaction to the news when you heard that the Padres are coming after your boy? Uh, sadness, great and <laughs> awful sadness to my very soul of being. Uh, there's not a coach or person in the organization I at least wanted to, lo- that I wanted to lose less than him. Honestly, this was like the one where I'm like, take anyone else. Uh, can I, can I offer you a Carl Willis who for some reason was still the, and not some reason. I, we know why he was still the pitching coach. Tito loves his mm-hmm. boys. Uh, Ty Van Berkeley, who they let go was the longest tenured hitting coach for one of the bottom 10 offensive teams for almost his entire career. And you know what? We d- no one really knows how much a hitting coach really matters. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest, but still like uh, Tito loves those guys who are like 60 and up. Uh, if you want to, to see just how much he will go to bat, you can go and read those terrible Mickey Calloway stories where Tito is going yeah. to, to call people's husbands to be like, Hey, let's not make a big deal out of this. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. So Glad you brought because that of that, we were stuck with, um, you know, Willis is fine, but like Ruben is the guy, like there is not a pitcher in the system who didn't have a, and not, not for all of them. Necess- I mean, everyone had a Ruben story. I didn't get to interview all of them, but a lot of players mm-hmm. like coming up through the minors, I spent a lot of time in double a Akron. Uh, you know, it's, especially if you're a, a single guy at the time, it's, it's the best job in the world. You go to the press box, you watch a game on Friday <laughs> nights, you get dinner on the, them, the double A team always at dinner. That's and then amazing. you go downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You talk with Shane Bieber after the game and get him to discuss craft. What, what's better than hey, that? There you, you go. Know, there and, you go. Flex on no, him, Jeff. Let's I go. Mean, <laughs> Savali. I was there. Uh, oh, that's Karin, awesome. Karin Chalk, <laughs> yeah. Though he wasn't always the, the easiest interview. Uh, worst interview Spider ever, check, as, as they call him now. <laughs> yeah. Worst interview ever was Michael Brantley. I'm pretty sure he tried to kill me with his eyes. Uh, best interview was Jan Gomes. He, I had to be like, thanks, Jan, and go on. He would have talked to me for, I think, three more days. Nicest guy in the world. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of players out there. You get to see all sorts. Yeah. Uh, Josh Donaldson would have been the number. Well, Donaldson was another interesting one. But, uh, you know, there's some really uh, Tristan McKenzie. I remember sitting in a press box with him because he's charting the game and just chatting and watching that guy try to add calories. He's just eating the worst food possible. And I'm like, this is I can we trade metabolism? So I'll give you some weight. But that's, you know, I'm going way off track here. But just in terms of the talking with all of these pitchers through the years, the time down there around them, 
you didn't have to say, so what did Ruben teach you? It was always like, oh, I was working with Ruben. I was talking with Ruben or, you know, this came up when I worked with Ruben. You, you, they, pitchers mention him. It was never that I was going out of my way to ask about Ruben. Uh, the more time you spent down there, it just became obvious, like, this was one of the dudes. And this isn't to knock on the people still there. Right. It's not to knock on Matt Blake, who went to the Yankees a few years ago. Blake just hadn't been there as long. But I, Ruben was, you know, there's a, if you have the athletic and you're a Padres fan, maybe you might have missed. There's a great piece Zach Meisel did that kind of goes in depth. And I don't want to, like, rip off all of his work here. But just I, what it, to, you know, boil it down, it's Ruben would take all of the data and make it easy for pitchers to understand. And I, you know, I was talking today at work, teacher by day, the, uh, the gym teacher is our baseball coach and deflects for our t uh, baseball program. We put a few guys into D1. It's the coach who knows a little bit what he's doing. We we're discussing how hard it is even at that stage to get pitchers to change what they do and to change how they go out there. Even if you can give them good advice, they've done it so long, it's really resistant. So the fact that so many people trusted Ruben would completely scrap a delivery or would try to add a pitch that wasn't there before. And the ability he had to take all of that data and explain to a pitcher why he was doing this, what was best for them mm -hmm. and how often they believed right. him and how often they followed through. You know, I, anyone who listens to locked on Indians knows I've been slagging on the Padres for about a year and a half as maybe the worst pitching development system in baseball. There's a reason yes. why the two best teams in terms of pitching development are the Brewers and the Indians. And they've both gone out of their way to add pitchers from San Diego. Like yep. that's just right. That's out there. Both those teams are very good at it. And they both know San Diego is not. And adding Ruben is fantastic. He's going to do great work in the majors. Uh, I'm sure they will ask him for names. I, I, my biggest concern right now as someone who covers the Indians is between Hawkins and Niebla that you're going to see, you know, both, you know, Niebla said, oh, there's so many great people in Cleveland. They're going to be fine. I feel like they're going to get poached. Like there's going to be a, some more players who go both ways because San Diego's pitching development is just a mess. Like, again, yeah. I've talked about on the show. It's like if I got the Mets GM job and I'm going to continue to put my name out there, I've never had a, a DUI or an arrest. Um <laughs> The only thing that I have sent where I've joked is a dick pic is I send picture, pictures of Richard Nixon gifts. So I'm, you know, I'm really safe. You don't have to worry about anything with me coming back. The Mets back. could use some safety and some Yeah, calm, yeah. It's like, you, oh, yeah. The, the biggest controversy is he sends a dick pic and it's Richard Nixon doing the, you know, this thing. <laughs> so, uh, and if you don't have the video, you just, you missed it. Go check out the Locked On uh, Padres uh, YouTube feed there so you can see what I just did. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I got that job, I would be trying to get every, like, failed Padres pitching prospect, but that's after I would take a bunch of guys from the Brewers and the Indians in my system and work with them. I'd see like who is on the cheap, who is kind of the leftovers, because that development has been just bad. Like there, there's no other way around it. Uh, and, and one kid, you know, I don't want to slack too much on the system. I, I really liked the Padres as a kid. I was a big Sheffield fan when he was out there, when you had Sheffield and McGriff. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, I'm 40 to give people the timeline for me. And I always like the underdog teams, and that's what the Padres felt like at points. And I've rooted for them every time they've been in a World Series. But it just felt like outside of like Tatis that they've failed in kind of all aspects of development with some of their guys of late. Mm -hmm. And I'm very curious to see what Ruben does. But yeah, I, I just talked for like six minutes, uh, probably <laughs> on a simple question. But yeah, no, I was uh that's I was great, man. I love I it. I was baseball bereft. Let's put it that way. I it, it was the worst news I've seen. Uh, just purely baseball related news. Let's let's put that mm -hmm. qualifier there. Baseball, purely baseball. Uh, it was the worst news I've seen in a very long time. It's and, and it's interesting because I think that it's it's definitely the one that wasn't making as many headlines, right? And I, I can say that as just as someone who's asking for the picture for the thumbnail for this episode, there's not nearly as many pictures of Ruben Niebla as you can find for Bob Melvin, who the Padres also got, who was also you could argue. That that was like a poaching that occurred of some super highly regarded by another organization and is now with this team. My initial reaction before we get into a little bit deeper into the weeds here was kind of like, I was only worried. My big thing is, yes, the pitching development for the Padres was a top five prospect in baseball by most sites and analysts and whatnot. I don't know about you particularly. And then all of a sudden he's like in the 60s, <laughs> you know what I mean? Less than like seven months later. And it's like, you know, I'm not like a prospect expert, but that's that's probably not a good thing, right? And then you see him giving up a bunch of runs lately in the fall league and all that stuff. It's really not going that great. The hitting side of things is is better to, to a greater degree. You have guys like Cronenworth. Obviously, you have Tatis. And 
you have guys like Trent Christian, who's a little uh, whatever, but like you have you have good guys on the hitting side of things, right? Even if it's not particularly great, I think that Tatili does cover up for a lot of issues that we have definitely when it comes to the hitting side of things. But the pitching side, it's just like, I agree. Like if I'm a team, forget like Mackenzie Gore, I'd go for him too. But like, I, I might be going for Chris Paddock right now. I'm like, screw it, a star pitcher, but maybe he's a guy that's going to give me a, a low, you know, four ERA, give me decent innings. He's not this 5.6 guy who has the straightest fastball in baseball. Maybe he's just like an okay starter who can get stuff. Eric Lauer was viewed as like, not, not the same level, but he had that same sort of, oh, wow, they really gave up Eric Lauer. They gave up nothing. And Eric Lauer this year is like the perfect type of guy that the Padres could have used down the stretch to fill innings for them and just be a low sort of ERA guy. He was pretty solid for them. So I agree with what you're saying, but then bringing in the ABA for me, it was just a sign that, okay, they're addressing some of these things. This isn't just probably bringing in some guy from Texas where he used to work to kind of help develop things and whatnot. But before we get even deeper into the weeds with that, since like you said, you did talk a while, Jeff, Jeez, Louise. Um, All right. Let me talk to you about something that is equally as phenomenal as the Padres hirings of Niebel and Bob Melvin. That, of course, is the best protein bars in all the land, guys. I, for, first of all, though, let me just say one thing. I love Thanksgiving. All the good foods and treats. I hate when people play Christmas music on November 1st. I think it's obnoxious. I don't think you need to play Christmas music for a month and a half. It's fine. 25 days is fine. Just wait right after you finish your meal. It's okay, guys. It's More of something isn't always good. But anyway. It's the perfect time, guys, for Built Bars, all right? They're the new holiday dessert. Feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars, however, are only 130 calories and only 4 grams of sugar with plenty of protein. Replace that coconut cream pie with the coconut Built Bar or the raspberry Built Bar instead of the raspberry pie. Low calorie, low carb, low fat, high protein. It's a great option for you guys out there, and they taste delicious. And it's not just those flavors that I mentioned. Cherry Barcia is my mom's personal favorite, and they've got all sorts of new flavors popping up every now and then. So be sure to check these things out, guys. Go.com and use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Remember, that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. And, of course, again, Thank you guys for making Locked On Padres and Locked On Indians your hashtag first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Jeff, let's keep it going, man. Let's keep it going. We, we, we got to keep this good stuff. You did talk for like eight minutes, but I loved it. This is this is the fun thing, though, is because you didn't you did you did address this lightly, I guess, kind of, you know, ostensibly. But like the Padres, one of the worst type of pitching development systems. I truly do believe that Chris Paddock, he's worth a flyer at this point if I'm a team, if I can get him for the right price. You can give up uh, Logan Allen or that type of player, whoever the heck you guys even have anymore. For Chris Paddock, I would do it in a heartbeat if I'm them, just because he might be a de- he might he. There's just this feeling of he they have to be better than what's going on in San Diego. That's how bad it's gotten. But Cleveland is just viewed as one of those teams that's kind of like a pitching farm. It's not up there with... I mean, Tampa to a degree too is like this. I think that they're probably the, you know, the the, the grand uh, example that everybody points to where Shane McClanahan, no one's ever heard of him before. Ryan Yarber, all these guys, and they get the best out of their pitchers. Shane Baz, who was like a decent prospect, and all of a sudden he's debuting and really disturbingly makes it look easy, by the way. That guy scares me. Uh, he's just, uh, vroom, and throws like 100 miles an hour. I don't know how he does it. But Cleveland is a really up there organization. So I didn't know anything about Ruben Niebla, but all I saw was, great, it's a guy from Cleveland. They know how to develop pitching. This doesn't seem like just some random hire. What do you think Padres fans can look forward to specifically? And do you do you think that, say, that this could have a greater impact on guys like Paddock, guys like Mackenzie Gore, or maybe even Mike Clevenger, who we acquired from you last year. Before I do that, I just want to take a say I did have Shane Bass rated as the top high school pitcher in his uh, his draft class. I'll go back and point and really? McClanahan, uh, University of Central Florida Bull. I had him All as right. a first rounder. So two I'll hits. Just, I'll throw those. I'll give that. Uh, and if <laughs> anyone is curious, uh, while I'm at it, I pulled it up. I have uh, Landon Sims, right-handed pitcher from Mississippi State, going to the Padres in next year's draft in my way too early mock. Uh, okay. If uh, if anyone wants to go check him out, but yeah, the the Indians they have a type uh, when it comes to this type of development. Honestly, when that trade for Clevenger happened, 
a lot of people in Cleveland are like, oh, Naylor and Quantrell. And I'm like, no, no, no. Okay. Arias is the number one piece. Cantillo is the number two piece. Quantrell is the three. Uh, And you had the, that was one of those things I thought from the beginning. And I liked that trade. A lot of people hated the Clevenger trade. I'm like, let's, let's take a second here. Mm -hmm. Uh, They got guys who were such Indians pitchers. Let's see what they can do. Let's see what they can develop. And Cantillo was hitting 97. Uh, He missed most of the year due to injury. Uh, they're probably going to lose him to the Cubs in the Rule 5 draft. I'm just waiting for it because the, the Indians are on such a roster crunch. There's no way they're going to be able to protect everyone. But there are certain arms. There are certain types. I mean, this past year, everyone knows, like, the Angels drafted only pitchers. The Indians mm-hmm. had 21 selections. They drafted 19 out of 21 pitchers. Uh, I jokingly, like, I, I got some the day before. the It was 3 a.m. the day before the draft. I had someone texting me, like, what are the Indians going to do? Because the Indians are very tight, tight-lipped. Uh, mm-hmm. and I've had, I don't, no one gives me inside information, but they're just easy to figure out. So I get a lot of texts, like what are the Indians going to do? Because no one can find things out. And then, uh, I've, I've gotten a few things right through the years. And I was like, okay, go find your college pitcher with a strikeout rate over 10 and a walk rate under three. And then they proceeded to draft like 17 out of those 19 <laughs> pitchers were that, uh, so they, through the years, they have times tried those kind of explosive arms and it just hasn't worked out well. That Tristan McKenzie is like the only high school prep pitcher that's worked out since, I mean, there's been maybe three guys since CC Sabathia, to give you an idea, counting McKenzie. So that's not what they do well. So they're going for a very specific type. When you look at uh, Quantrell and Cantillo, those are kind of more of those safe type arms. And, uh, I, you know, Clevenger can stay healthy. That's, that's always been the thing. Mm-hmm. And you can go back with Clevenger and a lot of his greatness. And he might be like Niebla's best success story. Like people forget Clevenger was the Vinny Pisano was a great reliever whose arm fell off and he, he was, he, his arm was dead when they traded him. Like he wasn't even a useful pitcher anymore. So it was a guy who's clearly in decline and they got Clevenger who was already hurt for the second time. And I remember talking to Clevenger in the minors and he's like, the angels gave me binders. The Indians broke down my biomechanics, like mm-hmm. just a complete difference in approach and how they wow. did things even then. Mm-hmm. And Niebla Rubin was one of those guys who was kind of really working with him. And then even once he showed those steps, I remember showing up to that double A team being like, this team is awful. Like it was the worst, like it was considered at the time to have the worst prospect pool. You show up and you're like, who's this guy? Uh, His bicep is bigger than my head. It was Yandy Diaz. And then you're like, who is this pitcher with the weird hair, Uh, the long hair, the flow? It's Mike Clevenger. At the time, neither were even considered like remote top 10 prospects. They both were by the end of the year. (laughs) Uh, and they both worked really hard and were like, you know, great examples. Like they just, they were going to be great. You could see it early on. Uh, and Clevenger, even by the end of that year, it was still like, okay, so he's going to be like a four or five because he's got control issues. And they kept working with him and refining him to when he was healthy. I think mean, people forget because he was, he had his, his COVID situation and his injury situation. I mean, he started 2020 making some top 10 pitcher in all the baseball lists. Like that's yeah, still there. I remember that. One of and, the lowest ERAs for yeah. a stretch of time among all starting pitchers. Yeah. So it's, it's unfortunate that, I mean, it, it really just comes down to, will he be healthy? Cause mm-hmm. if he's there and I'm sure he was ecstatic I and mean, he knows, uh, I never heard any you, people love to tell you the negative things. Like yeah. I've spent time in the minors. I have stories that I am not allowed to speak, tell or share. Uh, <laughs> you know, everyone's got a dirty <laughs> story on some player. Yeah. Like some of them are like, oh, why is that guy not in prison? And then eventually, you know, they, they are. But others, <laughs> it, it's lesser. You know, people love, love to tell Like that's you sit there in the press box. It's it's nine innings. Sometimes it's like a 15-2 affair. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, mm-hmm. do you hear about the time we had to hide his yeah. girlfriend from his other girlfriend while his wife mm-hmm. was here? You mm-hmm. know, like that's like the stories you Baseball hear. Baseball is a sport designed to have conversations while watching. It's oh, just, yeah. That's it's, how it works those minor league teams travel so much, but it's a small area. So it, it does lead to a lot of like, I heard a lot of stories about people having multiple girlfriends and just how that situation was handled by minor league mm-hmm. teams, you okay. know, things like that. Those stories, you know, and you hear about managers who are like doing things or not paying attention. Never heard that with Ruben. So that's always the thing that stands out. It's like this, mm-hmm. he was just a baseball rat. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see what he can do. Uh, if you know you're talking about Paddock, the guy I would love to trade for personally is Morjan. Like uh, I just think that the oh, Seahawks, I mean, Gore yeah. is my number one. Like, no, I, I would. I refuse. I, would lo- 
<laughs> I would love Lamar to Hone see. Had the had the Tommy John surgery. If not, yeah, that was like a low key injury that happened for the Padres at the beginning of the year that might have helped after all these you know disappointing players and whatnot. Yeah, Morna Hones of, but that's a name that like nobody's talking about right but now. So I think should. that's really under the radar. When he comes back, worst case scenario, working with Ruben, like yeah, he's going to have to build up arm strength. He'll probably be control issues. For some, not everyone. Some guys come back and the control is back. Like he could be special right out of the game. Yeah, like he's mm-hmm. a perfect guy you want. Like you almost want him on the. I'm not sure what his situation is. But you almost want to put make sure he's on the majors and at least in the bullpen working with Ruben. Like you want mm-hmm. Ruben with someone like him so you, because of the way development's gone with how good his arm is. Like that is the perfect guy. Paddock, mm-hmm. that is the perfect guy. Like these young arms, just let Ruben do his thing. And, and I think it will also help. You know, like I said. Pitchers are very resistant to change. So when you have Clevenger in there, who, you know, I don't know how connected he gets with everyone, but he's someone who can be like, no, he helped me a lot. That's going to help, yeah. I think, make everyone a little more. That cl- that and he's bilingual, yeah. which is such an, imp- I mean, obviously, you know, he is Latin American. Uh, so, but not everyone who is, is bilingual. You run into that. Yeah, of course. You know, stereotype. Of course. Mm-hmm. But uh, that helps so much too. I mean, just in general, any coach, like if you want to be a baseball coach, become bilingual. Like that's, that's a great first step uh, just mm-hmm. in general to working with uh, a lot of the talent there is. And he's a San Diego guy. Uh, you got to mm-hmm. kind of appreciate that. His daughter's going to San Diego state. He's moving back yep. home. So, uh, you know, former was he, I love how his uh, baseball reference page relief pitcher and right fielder from Azazu Pacific uh, <laughs> greatest player in the history of that program. Uh, Stephen Voigt, just uh vote, just, uh, just won his first world series ring. Uh, the one San Diego Padre yeah. was John Littlefield, uh, who played in 1981 for uh, the Padres. So definitely know who that is, 100. Yeah, percent you know he uh, <laughs> he he pitched in 42 games. So that's 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 your your last tie to Azazu Pacific before Ruben Niebla came into town. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. And like it's it's just really exciting. And what you describe sounds like just. They need a baseball rat. They need somebody who's going to get in there and be like, all right, let's at least not make it that every team in Major League Baseball knows that every single Padres pitcher is a mess. And, you know, Morna Hohen and all these guys, it's it's just so exciting. I heard the news and I, I, I argued that this might even be a bigger thing than Bob Melvin, honestly. I think both of them mean a lot because you had that piece that dropped in The Athletic that was kind of talking about A.J. Preller's tendencies and he doesn't have people that disagree with him and he has a more tight-knit circle and whatnot. And then here he comes out and regarded as one of the best managers in baseball. And then this guy from Cleveland that churn out pitchers like it's nothing. So the point where training Mike Clevenger isn't like the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like every, most other teams, I feel like people would be freaking out. Not that the Cleveland fans didn't, but you see how that turned out. Um, but I also want to talk to you about what the Padres sent back before we kind of wrap up this podcast, because Padres fans have been losing it over the guys that they sent back specifically Mr. Quantrill. But before we do that, before we do that, Jeff, I need to talk to you, Portland, all right? We're back and better than ever. New web interface, everything for the start of basketball season. Started a couple weeks ago, but still, you get my point. It is Bet Online, your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this upcoming season or currently ongoing seasons. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit just use our promo code locked on and you will receive that bonus but of course it's not just basketball and football man they've also got you covered in baseball because you'll see new baseball podcasts of course they, they cover baseball it's great Baseball's good sometimes, at least in my opinion. Uh, they've got hockey. They've got boxing. They've got UFC. They're probably going to cover Oscars stuff and Emmys and whatever the heck that they got going on there. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports or events and what have you. Bet online where the game starts. And now Jeff likes this last year old segment. This is fun. I, I love having a good old fashioned nerdy baseball chat. You know what I'm saying? Or at least fashion any sport chat to be honest with you, because the world can have some very unfortunate developments and you just want to log off and never speak about things ever again. Let's just say we're recording this on a Thursday and I'll leave it at that Thursday, November 4th. Uh, I'm trying to leave this day behind me. Does that sound like a privileged point of view? Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, I just don't want to talk about it. But anyway, this is for, I forgot to mention that, by the way, guys, it's Friday, November 5th. I forgot to say that at the top of this podcast. Damn it. You know, every time I do a crossover with someone, 
on the YouTube restream, I always forget like my intro and how to introduce things. I don't know why it's weird. It throws me off my game. But anyway, let's talk about this, this, this Cleveland trade for Mike Clevenger, which you said you at the time were like, this is pretty good. I like the return. They give up all these guys. I mean, even Austin Hedges gets sent over. Josh Naylor, who almost became a playoff super legend, by the way, mm. uh, for Cleveland last year, which is really, really I, I fun. I forgot about it. Yeah, th- <laughs> there you go. Like he had all these things, and then he gets taken out of the game, and they're like, what are you doing? This is insane. He's like the, the hottest player on the team right now. And then the guy ends up getting a hit. It's this whole thing. Unfortunately, falling to the Yankees anyway, which which was sad. I wanted Cleveland to win. They have they had my boy Lindor at the time on the team. Um, But – at the time, I think that this is still one of those trades that, at least in my opinion, before I ask you, look, it's easy to say now with Mike Clevenger having gotten a Tommy John surgery treatment that the Padres lost the trade and that why did they do that? They should have given up Paddock or they should have given up somebody else. Why did we give up contract? First of all, in order to get value, you sometimes have to give up value. That's kind of how trades work, especially when you're dealing with teams that clearly have a decent uh, reputation at making trades. This is a Colorado. This is at Pittsburgh. This is Cleveland. And they're pretty good at that stuff, even if their ownership oftentimes, I'm pretty sure I've spent more money on Ritz crackers uh, back in college than they have on buying talent. But fair, fair. they gave up Cal Quantrill, who was okay for the Padres. He had his moments. Last year was a little bit of a make it or break it thing. That's what I said heading into 2020. Like more viewed as a very top level prospect. But granted, that was in San Diego system, which at the time was so, so like considered by many to be one of the best farm systems in a long time. And then, you know, so Quantrill maybe wasn't viewed as highly just because the Padre system was so loaded at the time. So they traded him, not because he was necessarily performing, goes to Cleveland. And I believe it was the month of August. He was on fire for Cleveland and I had a bunch of Pirates fans seeing, oh my God, Preller, he's a fraud. Why did he trade this guy? First of all, guys, we don't know if we would be feeling this upset about it if Clevenger was pitching. Injuries happen. This is just how it works sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So that part is a little fluky to an extent. But what can you tell us about Kyle Quantrill? Is it legit? Did the Padres make an error here? Did they did the Indian just get a, a guy who's just solid and maybe had one good month? What is kind of the feeling going on? with Kyle Contra right now. He's such an interesting guy just because like I remember heading into his draft year, like he had some number one overall talk. Uh then he mm-hmm. just didn't play. He was hurt. Uh and then he decided not to pitch and it was essentially he had a deal in place with the Padres and he got a nice bonus and slid to them with the eighth overall pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was never gonna be the eye popper in the minors. You know, he's not uh Patino, he's not uh, Bays, he's not any of those guys. He's a he's a sinker ball guy. That's you're gonna be limited. The most interesting thing when I like did the deep dive on his numbers is, you know, I already mentioned on the show, there's basically like three things for the Indians. Like, uh, okay, what's the walk rate? What's the strikeout rate? And then do they throw a slider? Mm -hmm. And that's the number two pitch for Quantrell. His slider, if you go over to Baseball Savant and you look at the runs value by pitch, in San Diego, it was uh, positive two. He gets to Cleveland, it's a negative one, and this year it's a negative 13. It's It becomes a plus-plus pitch. Uh, they, you know, I saw Aaron Savali in the minors and was convinced he was nothing. Like, I'll be honest, mm-hmm. I completely missed it. I saw him in double A. Talked with other people who also, it's like, this guy, why did they take him as high as they did? And th- then Ruben redid his whole delivery, really worked on that slider. Slider was always his best pitch, um, Mm -hmm. but really worked with him. So again, giving credit to Ruben, but they just, they can identify a slider. And with Contral, pretty much the Indians didn't even know what they had in him. He didn't start the year in their rotation. Logan uh, S. Allen or Logan Allen, the elder, as I like to say, as opposed to Logan Allen, the younger, (laughs) who we also drafted. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a plethora of Logan Allen's. Uh, Logan Allen coming from San Diego as well. Uh, he was the, the best shape of his life story and he got the opportunity and um, he was awful. And uh, Tristan McKenzie was really rough to start the year. Once Quentrell stepped in, he stepped in to stay. And, you know, depending on what you look at, uh, he has different valuations, but I, I don't think he's necessarily like a, a, a front rotation type of guy. I, he did mm-hmm. look like that at points, but he's going to be a solid mid rotation starter. No worries. Mm-hmm. He's, He's got the pitch mix. He keeps it down. Uh, the the one knock really is going to be, he's probably not going to miss enough bats. But uh, yeah, he better pitcher. 
But if you look mm-hmm. at what value Clevenger could have brought over two and a half years versus what Quantrell is going to bring in five, like Quantrell will end up having a higher war for the Indians than Clevenger had for the Padres. And then mm-hmm. that's how I've been getting into. Don't, if you're a Padres fan, just ignore what Arias did this past year in double A or in triple A. <laughs> I'm sorry, he skipped double A with the Indians. He went right to triple A. Yeah, I'd and, like to skip um, that. Uh, you don't want to look. If you're mad about Quantrill, don't 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 look at the things he did uh, as the top defensive shortstop in a system known for its defensive shortstops. Don't mm-hmm. don't look. It's just it's going to make you sad. And again, don't look at Cantillo, Cantillo once he came back and was at 97, 98. All right, we get um, it, man. You no, know, <laughs> you know what? I, I love OOTP. When I tried to make that trade in OOTP baseball, the computer rejected it. They would not do the club really. Trade. The Padres <laughs> GM rejects that trade. When I and I have last year's. So I never bought this year's. So it's like I went to load it in at the start of the year. Like nope. We're, we that's and I had to force it through to to get rosters updated. So that's the uh, the humor of it. Uh, you know, Naylor. We hope he comes back. Uh, don't go look at his knee injury. Speaking of things not to go look at, that's one of the more gruesome yeah, things this year in I baseball. Did hear about this. Yeah, but uh, you gotta love it from an Indians perspective. Again, I, at the end of the day, Clevenger's ceiling is so much higher. You are 100 percent on with that. I agree. If if everything is clicking, if the Padres are a postseason team as people expect them expected them yeah. to be, mm-hmm. you want Clevenger out there, not Quantrill. That's yeah. not a knock on Quantrell, but Clevenger's ceiling is so much higher. Like he's that guy. Different team and, situations too. Yeah, he can go out like, and win you a game. Mm-hmm. He can completely if you're, shut down. If you're a rebuilding team that doesn't have a lot of starting pitching like the Padres were at least projected to, then you keep a Quantrill and you just want to keep assets. And like you said, over five years. But if you're a team that theoretically has a Darvish, has a Snell, has a Lamette, has a Musgrove, you go out and trade or what have you and get that other star pitcher to have because, you know, you don't necessarily know what's going to happen when Kyle Quantrill hits the postseason and gets a lot of better teams. But like, that's just how it works. It's what happens when you're like super in contention. But I think you bring up a lot of good points. I think people, the athletic piece, the 100 percent thing that I think that I've been trying to echo a whole lot is just like 31 players given up for nine players. You better hope that those nine players hit. You can't maybe you can have a couple that don't. But you can't have guys who in totality are just sort of, you know, average or, or I'm saying below average. You have to have your types like, you know, you can't have someone who's a minus. You can't go out there and be like, oh, no, Adam Frazier is just like a minus player. If someone's just OK, maybe they're I brought him up earlier. Eric Lauer types, you know, what I mean, guys who are just going to help you get this season. You need that if you're trading away that many players and oftentimes some of the pods fans, they reply to the comments and they say, well, why are we valuing these? You don't know what these guys are going to be to that. I agree. Prospect fetishization is a real thing. So that's the point where people are like, dude, why'd you trade, you know, uh, Jack Swinsky, Blake Hunt. I'm making up names now, or those guys Blake are real, Hunt's but, a real one though. It's yeah. Somewhere. Blake Hunt's and, a real one though. And it's like, right? why'd you trade them for Blake Hunt's going to, did you see this video on my iPhone six of him launching a home run? Why did we trade for Lindor or whatever the heck? Right. And it's like, that's when people do get a little out of control. The thing that I come back to is I almost don't care how the, what they are going to be as a player. For me, it's always, all right, maybe they figure out whatever. That's not my job. I'm not a prospect analyzer. For me, it's just assets. When you have mm-hmm. assets, you can make more moves. The fact that the Padres didn't trade anybody for Max Scherzer. Yes. I wish they could have had Scherzer, but if teams were asking for Abrams, could Scherzer have been great? Sure. Sure. He could have been great. You saw what he did for the Dodgers, but here's the thing. What if you realize that the guy, the moves that you make, you need flexibility. You need to be able to alter direction. And when you don't have that prospect system, when you have all this money paid to Hosmer, paid to Tatis, paid to Machado, you know, two of those three players are excellent. I I actually mentioned his name. Damn it. I made a decree to not mention his name. I I messed up. I'm sorry. Uh, Tatis Machado. You could have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Will Myers. There you go. Uh, Tatis Machado and the guy who plays first. Um, You know, it's just. That's that's the big thing for me is it's not all teams don't always keep their prospects just because they think, yeah, we know Abrams and Gore are the next Scherzer and Trevor Story, whatever the heck. Right. Like we know that that's that's how we view them. Maybe they're just like, I need to keep these guys, because what if next year, God forbid, Jay Cornerworth isn't that good. And all of a sudden we're like, oh, maybe we don't have the second baseman of the future. Good thing we have this other guy that we're really excited about and we have a lot more control over and he's super young. That's the whole point, and I think Padres fans have to kind of keep that in mind. And again, you traded for Clevenger. It's not like you knew he was going to get hurt. This just happens. I don't think Padres fans are talking about Kyle Quantrill if Mike Clevenger is healthy. I think they're just like, oh, wow, he did good. He did well. 
good for him. You know, that's just yeah. what happens sometimes. This is what happens, man. But hopefully the pods can learn from some of their mistakes and take the Cleveland approach and just sort of go after guys that are devalued. You don't want to be known as the team that everyone's trying to trade for your pitchers because you can't do anything with them. And hopefully Niebla and to an extent Bob Melvin are a good sign that they're starting to realize we need an organizational sort of overhaul. You know what I mean? While Preller can make some good moves every now and then, he can't. It's it's not a great sign that everybody that they seem to trade away turns into something. That's not a good sign, usually, especially when Snell and Darvish aren't necessarily performing up to expectations. But uh, that's basically all my thoughts on Ruben and Cal Quantra and whatnot. Jeff, do you have any final like takes on Cleveland's whole situation? What is like the number one thing actually you're looking forward to this offseason? I I'm obsessed with the Rule Five. Uh, if any <laughs> of my fans are listening, they could I. I, no one is confirmed, but I bet there's a drinking game for this because I've done so many permutations. The Indians are really up against it. Uh, they've got some really interesting... Like I said, Cantillo had that great year, and he, no way they have space to protect him. So I'm very curious to see how that goes because um, uh, I'm an Indians fan. They're not going to sign anybody. Uh, it, we're hoping they don't trade Jose Ramirez, that there's like we maybe get new minority ownership and can afford to keep Jose. But uh, when you're looking at what do I look forward to, I'm like, well, at least this will be interesting. We'll we'll have to kind of see from there. Uh, maybe they give Fran Mill Reyes an extension. Like those. Are the oh my boy, my brother, my brother. I love Fran Mill. I love that guy so much. I was so sad when they traded him. I get That's why one of those... because of the defense and it's American League, so it's easier for them to slide in. But it's still like yeah. ah, that trade wasn't that bad though. It's it's not an indefensible one. It's just when you what have value, the lack though? of the DH, you know, for value. Because Fran Mill yeah. to Trammell to off Spectrum kind of yeah. shows exactly what's gone wrong, though, to a degree, right? Like yeah, they exactly. I think that in a vacuum, though, into... the trade isn't that bad. Yeah, I think it's just kind of like, because, like, again, again, Padres fans, he's a really good bat. I love watching that guy play. I like the video of him talking to the former cancer patient or what have you that went a little bit viral. That was adorable. I love Fran Mill Reyes. Um, my brother, love him. I got to text him again or something like that soon. Um, but, like, this is in fairness, not a good defender and they could just play him at DH. So that's yeah. part of the reason why they did it. Baseball is stupid. Nationally, get your act together. That's what I'm looking forward to. Agreed. Please bring the DH to be to the, uh, the national league for everybody's pitchers wondering. Hitting oh, is boring. Pitchers hitting yes. is boring. We saw it happen in the world series on a big stage. How dumb it was that the Astros were like, what the heck? We're just going to have our inning ended by this. And also and I'm going to keep saying this on every pod when it gets brought up, it makes the trade deadline and free agency more interesting. It literally means that there's another aspect of your team to build around. So everybody, grow up. Stop listening to 75-year-olds that claim that they want the sport to be more exciting, yet they they get excited by a pitcher who gets a base hit every once in a while. But anyway, um, Jeff, do you have any last things to plug on your pod or any future things you're working on? Uh, you know, I locked on Indians slash Guardians. Uh, people always ask me when we switch over. I assume when there's merch, we'll switch, like, essentially. And uh, <laughs> you, it, it's very, very, very irregular. But if you did want to go see that mock, whenever I do have the time to write and I write about the draft, that's over at, uh, I should probably make sure I have it right, mlbdraftnow.blogspot.com. You can tell I'm really going for the, uh, the high end <laughs> when I'm doing the blog spot. But it's 100% free. So if you want to go get draft content, and uh, everything else is behind a paywall. You know, every few months I post something that's uh, excessively long there. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Jeff's really smart about baseball stuff, guys. Be sure to go do that. And let me just tell you guys, thanks again for making Locked On Padres and Locked On Indians your hashtag first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB, Paul Francis Sullivan, but please call him Sully. He's also one of those old people that likes the pitching, the guy batting, so... Be a little bit careful when listening to Sully, but every other take he has, great stuff on the Locked On MLB Prospect, MLB Podcast, not Prospect, MLB uh, Podcast, bringing you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. That is also free and available on all platforms. And yeah, that about for today's edition of the Locked On Padres podcast, guys. It's the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you podcast from. Like, like I said, free and available on all platforms. You can follow me at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. And I'm pointing to it right now. And if you see me pointing to it, that means you're watching YouTube. Subscribe, Lockdown Padres on YouTube. Great stuff. Jeff, he's over at Jeff MLB Draft on Twitter. Very big sports nerd, especially baseball nerd, as you can tell from the Twitter handle. And this has been a blast, sir. And uh, can't wait to talk again when the Padres and Indians inevitably make another trade. It, it, it's going to happen. So, like, uh, we'll just say in... 
uh, two and a half months, like week before right, two and Christmas. And a half months. <laughs> that's on cloud. Week before Christmas, we'll have our next chat about the trade that's coming. Lock it down, everybody. And until next time, stay safe. And of course, stay faithful, my fire faithful homies. Take care.